Hello there, my fellow battle brothers, and welcome to your weekly dose of the Space Marine Chapter's lore. After a whooping seven episodes on the Crimson Fists, we finally arrive at something different. These guys are arguably the most famous Space Marine Chapter in the Imperium, or at least one that is not a first founding one. Ladies and gentlemen, they are zealous, they are mighty, they are unstoppable, they are the Black Templars. Goes without saying that this chapter has a lot of lore behind them, probably even more than the Crimson Fists. But today we're gonna start, as we always do, with their early history. Do stay until the end and vote on a future topic too. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? Once upon a time, at the Siege of Terra during the Horus Heresy, there were many champions of chaos arising from the ranks of the traitors. It was during this time that the Primarch of the Imperial Fists, Rogel Dorn, chose the Imperial Fists first captain Sigismund to become the Emperor's champion. Captain Sigismund was given the best armor and weapons that the Legion had, and he swore a holy duty to seek out and destroy all the foul champions of chaos that he could find. He did that by challenging over two dozen of them to a duel and slaying them or banishing them back into the Immaterium. At the end of the Horus Heresy, as most of you well know, each of the Legions was broken down into smaller organizations known as Chapters each one composed of 1,000 warriors. This was part of a plan to spread the power of the Imperial Armed Forces so that no one man could bring to bear the influence that the Warmaster Horus had over his Space Marines. Rogel Dorn, the Primarch of the Legion responsible for the defense of Terra, initially refused to have the Legion broken down. He even fought with his fellow Primarch Robut Gilliman over the problem going so far as to calling Big Bobby G a coward. But Gilliman would have none of it and in turn accused Dorn of heresy and disloyalty to the Emperor. The Primarchs Lehman Russ and Vulcan would favor Dorn's approach, while Jagatai Khan and Korax of the Raven Guard supported Gilliman's position. It was only after an attack on an Imperial Fist vessel, the cruiser Terrible Angel, by the Imperial Navy of all people, and the threat of a new civil war between the Legion of Dorn and the newly formed successor chapters of the other founding legions, that he finally decided to relent and allow the Imperial Fists to be divided. And so, the surviving Imperial Fists were split into four main chapters during the second founding. The youngest of them were the Crimson Fists. The chosen warriors of Dorn remained the Imperial Fists, and the Orbital Assault Specialists were long believed, although erroneously, to have become the infamous Soul Drinkers chapter. The fourth main successor of the Imperial Fists were the Black Templars, and they would arguably become the strongest, most numerous, and the most famous. Sigismund, who survived the Horus Heresy, became the Black Templar's first chapter master. He took with him only the most zealous of the Imperial Fist brothers and those that shared his fervor. These guys, in turn, took on the black and white panoply of Sigismund's own armor and then embarked upon a new Imperial Crusade to prove their loyalty to the Emperor. Sigismund outright refused to adhere to the Codex Astartes, seeing the treatise written by Robut Gilliman as an insult to the teachings of his own Primarch Rogel Dorn and instead he led his own warriors into the depths of space, taking the war directly to the enemies of the Imperium and punching them in the face wherever and whenever he could find them. In the centuries and the millennia since, the chapter has diverted even more from the standard tenets of the Adeptus Astartes. Embracing the faith and acknowledging the God Emperor's divinity, they have developed a fanatical zealotry and aggressiveness. This deviation from orthodoxy disturbs many other Space Marine chapters, although their dedication to eradicating the foes of the Emperor can definitely not be questioned. Sigismund himself swore an oath to, and I quote, 
prove his loyalty, never resting in the prosecution of his duties against the enemies of the Emperor. That simple oath is one that every succeeding High Marshal has renewed, resulting in the longest Space Marine Crusade in the history of the Imperium. It can be said that the Black Templars is the only Space Marine chapter in existence known to still follow the Emperor's original vision of the Great Crusade, which was to protect and reunite all the scattered worlds of humanity across the galaxy. Of course, there are other crusading chapters out there, but arguably none which has been doing this 24-7 for the last 10 millennia. Ever since their creation during the Second Founding, the Black Templars have waged a righteous war against the many enemies of the Imperium, prosecuting the Witch, the Alien, and the Heretic with equal fervor, and a devotional zeal unmatched by many other chapters. Smaller Crusades are in turn created in the confines of this one Great Crusade, and some of the early notable Black Templar Crusades are as follows. The Great Scouring, sometime in the 31st millennium. With the division of the Imperial Fists, Sigismund became the very first High Marshal. He began the chapter's very first crusade by leading the Black Templars to purge the Chaos Forces from the Donatello system, in what would be one of the final campaigns of the Great Scouring itself. Here they faced a force of Night Lords who didn't want to retreat, but in doing so they gave their allies time enough to plunge back into the Eye of Terror, but the Night Lords were destroyed utterly. The First Black Crusade, 781-M31 A great fleet of the Black Templars, under the High Marshal Sigismund himself, would defend the Cadian Gate against the first of Abaddon the Despoiler's incursions into Imperial space since the Horus Heresy. Sigismund did lead the Black Templars for multiple centuries after their founding, obsessed with hunting down the traitor legions which had fled into the Eye of Terror during the Scouring. During the First Black Crusade of Abaddon the Despoiler, when Sigismund was well over a thousand years old, the forces of the Black Legion assaulted the Black Templar's flagship Eternal Crusader, determined to find and kill the High Marshal. Sigismund met Ezekiel Abaddon in a duel for the ages, but unfortunately he was killed by the new Warmaster of Chaos, but not before he had buried the Black Sword deep into the Despoiler's chest, leaving a scar that would bother him forevermore. The Black Templars were defeated in that engagement, but the Black Legion forces were also forced to withdraw eventually to tend to their wounded Chaos Lord and face all the other foes. Before his death, Sigismund warned Abaddon with, and I quote, You will die as your weakling father did, soulless, honorless, weeping, and ashamed. In the second half of M32, the Black Templars took part in the infamous War of the Beast, enacting the Last Wall Protocol, defending Terra, and later contributing part of their might to rebuild the then-extinct Imperial Fist chapter. At the beginning of the 5th century M34, the Black Templars ended the Catalexis Heresy by executing the Caco Dominus, which was an alien cyborg whose formidable psychic powers allowed him to control the population of untold planetary systems. After his death, the Cacodominus' death scream echoed and amplified into the Immaterium, burning the minds of millions of astropaths and distorting the signal of the Astronomicon itself. Thousands and thousands of Imperial Voidships were lost in the resulting upheaval, and entire subsectors slid back into barbarism without the dictates of the Adeptus Terra to guide them. This unfortunate event became known as the Howling. The second purging of Lastrati was a campaign that occurred in 543 M36. It was part of the then called Athalor Crusade, under the command of Marshal Gerhardt of the Black Templars. During Lastrati's tumultuous past, a sect called the Divine Army gained control of the then unremarkable High World of Lastrati, located in the Ultima Segmentum. The Divine Army preached the doctrine of intolerance, 
of those with even the slightest deviation from what their leaders viewed as the physical attributes of the perfect human being. They made genetically tailored viruses which targeted particular traits, eradicating large chunks of the population. When Imperial contact was re-established with the planet, out of 14 billion people, only 2.5 million remained. Lastrati had become a place of pilgrimage, and for centuries, the faithful had come to bear witness to such spectacles as the Hill of Heretics or the Plain of Purity. The Marshal of the Black Templars of the Aphalor Crusade had come to Lastrati to take heart from the planet's potent displays of faith of the past, but they were horrified instead by what they found. The so-called Quintarchs of Lastrati had turned to barbaric blood rituals and human sacrifice in search of their genetic perfection. In the beginning, the Space Marines were seen as examples of genetic supremacy. But the more the Black Templars saw, the more they realized that these rituals were quite similar to rituals to the ruinous powers. The Marshal ordered the planet cleansed of its degenerate inhabitants before continuing the crusade. After four years of fighting, the warriors of the Black Templars forced the remaining forces of the Lastrati back into the Plain of Purity, where they would make a final last stand before the Templars at a place called the Hill of Heretics. The army was destroyed. The Black Templars showed no mercy and accepted no surrender. Those deemed free from the taint were allowed to live an act of mercy which was to have some serious repercussions for the Marshal in the later years. For today's poll, I am not gonna make you choose another chapter, but you can choose between three aspects of the Black Templars to cover next. Option A would be more famous crusades, Option B their organization, or Option C their recruitment. To vote, just write down your choice in the comments below. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Black Templars and some of their early history for today. In case you're curious, like I already said, this chapter has a lot of lore. So I'm gonna be with them for at least 5 episodes or more. I also know that they probably have a lot of fans even among you folks watching now so I'm not gonna ask if they're your favorite chapter. But I will ask you what do you like or dislike most about them. Feel free to share any thoughts or questions about these early history crusades in the comments below. If you found the episode informative or entertaining, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thanks a lot for watching to the end and I wish you a healthy and awesome day. The Emperor Protects.